we read where this man says, Moses informs us that heaven was created the exact time as the earth. We need to know that in the Hebrew, this word is always in the plural. What he fails to understand, it's always in the dual. He says, created the heavens and the earth at the same time. And he quotes Exodus 20, 11. For in six days the Lord God made heaven and earth to see and all that in them is. So these young earthers equate one with the other. Moses said in Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That is the same as in Exodus 20 where he says, in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Now, how many times I've said we have to pay attention to all the words? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. There's a whole lot more in here than most of us could ever begin to realize. And after spending many hundreds of hours on this, I don't even claim to have scratched the surface. So we're told in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. When did he create them? On six days or in the beginning? In the beginning. In the beginning. Is that the same as where Moses said in Exodus 20, verse 11, for in six days God made the heavens and the earth? Is that not the same thing? We say, well, it has to be the same thing. It's not. Moses didn't say in Exodus 20, verse 11, for God told us in the first chapter of Genesis, in six days he made the heavens and the earth. He doesn't say that. He, these are two different facts. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now that created, it's a simple verb. But it has additions to it. When they put like a little seven as a suffix to that, it changes the simple word create to what in English we call a pluperfect. And it's the difference between my wife baked a cake, yesterday my wife baked a cake, or yesterday my wife had baked a cake. Both past tense, but one is called pluperfect. It is not happening at the time that the statement is being made. In the beginning, at this beginning point, God created the heavens and the earth. No. In the beginning, God already had created the heavens and the earth. Here again, we're talking about a day, Sabbath day. He talks about that he wouldn't let them enter into their rest. Hebrews 3.11 Take heed therefore lest in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God and be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Chapter 4 Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left unto us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to fall short. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. For we, which have believed, do enter into his rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the end of the sixth day. Is that what it says? The works were finished from the foundation. In the beginning, God had created the heavens and the earth. He already had created them. Now here's where the Bible and science mesh. People poo-poo the Big Bang like it's a, the big boogeyman, the big bird, or some dumb thing. So I said, what is the difference if we call it the Big Bang or the God-awesome blast? God talks about performing powerful things by the blast of his nostrils. And the Bible tells us that he is stretching out, spreading out the heavens like a curtain. And if you check Young's and, and Concordant, and even in the King James, it said he spreadeth 
when they put spread in an ETH, spread if. So that's like the Greek errors tense is spreading. For God so loves the world. Should not he loved past tense? He's still loving. It's not come to an end. He's like he used to love the world, but now he doesn't. God still loves the world. Now they got it right in the rest of the verse. For God so loves the world. It didn't say then for whosoever believed on him. No, whosoever believeth. Present progressive. He so loves those that believes, and they should not be perishing, but be having the only in life. So the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For years, I didn't have a clue what that meant. How could they be finished from the foundation? Listen. Scientists say that as far as they can understand, the universe started at a central point, And it had a beginning. Now, they didn't say that 30, 40 years ago. They're saying it now. Cosmologists, physicists, astronomers all concede that this universe did indeed have a beginning. And it started at an infinitesimal point from which it spread out. And time and space spread out with matter. It isn't like there was this huge space from all eternity and God built a universe inside of it. The space itself is a creation. And scientists now believe that as the universe expands, space expands to receive it. Back in, uh, I don't know how many, not too many years ago, this one scientist detected what they call radio, radiation background noise in space, which is the echo left over from the Big Bang. Since they know that the heavens are spreading out, then when they're out here, at some time they were back here. And if they were spreading out here, they must have come from here. And if they ended up here and they're spreading, they must have come from in this one point. Do you know that the greatest Kabbalists have said that for two and three thousand years? Did you know that Mamanides said that the universe began as a speck the size of a mustard seed who never had one class in physics, astronomy, or cosmology a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago. They said that. They believed that that's what, the, what was meant. It started at a single point, no bigger than a mustard seed. The entire universe, that's exactly what Advocates of the Big Bang Theory say exactly what old Jewish Kabbalists were saying thousands of years ago who really understood the Hebrew of the Old Testament. They know by the laws of physics and quantum mathematics and all of these higher systems of learning, they know how to project backwards what would happen if you took the universe and start squeezing it back to its source. They can also extrapolate, not perfectly, but to a degree that it makes sense. They can extrapolate how the universe expanded. What happened in the first 100 million of a second. What happened? What happened the second hundred millionth of a second? And the third and the fourth? And the first minute? And the first three minutes? They can do it based on quantum math and physics. I used to hear this little takeoff on in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and then Scientists say, in the beginning, not God, but in the beginning was the hydrogen atom. In the beginning, the hydrogen atom, not God, the hydrogen atom. And that everything came from the hydrogen atom. 
I could never, it just didn't make sense to me. How can you get all of the other elements from a hydrogen atom? First of all, hydrogen is the lightest element there is. How can you get iron, which is very heavy, out of hydrogen? How can you get, how do you turn a hydrogen atom into iron? Why do you get the universe out of a mustard seed? <laughs> you take out all the air. Now, and it gets very hot. It's it, it, this is over my head, Bob. It gets hot. <laughs> but it appears the scriptures and scientists are agreed on this one. So, in the beginning, God had created the heavens and the earth, and they were finished from the very foundation. How so? I mean, we have to see what it was he created and what he later made from what he created. And we'll see the foolishness of such heretics as this. I have not a clue as to what they're talking about. In the beginning, God had created the heavens and the earth. We know from science it's at a starting point and spread out. We know from the scriptures it started with God and spread out. Not only spread out, but it's still spreading. Those words are still in the future tense. God is spreading. And science tells us that the universe is today. It is spreading. Now we know how scientists figured that out. But how did the writers of the scriptures know that? How could they look up at the starry skies at night and say, looks to me like it's spreading out at millions of miles an hour. There's no perception of movement at all. Except as the earth twists, what God created was everything that was necessary for what he was going to make. He did not create the heavens and the earth in six days, as this person tells us in Exodus. It does not. In Genesis it says, in the beginning God created. The word is bara. And it means to bring in something new. Something really new. In Exodus 20 it says, for in six days God made. First of all, even the translators knew not to put create. They put created in Genesis 1, 1, but not in Exodus 20, 11. Why didn't they put in six days God created the heavens and the earth? Because he didn't do that in six days. But what did he do in six days? He made the heavens and the earth. Well, what's the difference? All the difference in the world. In Genesis 1, 1, he brought into existence everything that exists in the universe. Through day one, through day six, he formed all of that into everything as we now see it in the universe. Two totally different operations. Totally, totally different. They are not synonymous. The word bara and the word asa are two different words and they mean two different things. In the beginning, he created it all. It was all there. But it wasn't until certain things transpired before he began his work of Asa. We read something very interesting. It says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested. It just means he stopped. He stopped from all his work, which God created and made. Now that is a horrible translation there. The created and made are okay. But not the word and. There's no word and in the Hebrew there. Which God created, that's bara. And the word made is asa. God blessed all which God created. It should be two or four. That word should always be translated to our four, not and. All 
that God created to make. Or if you wanted to say that He created for making. You would never learn that in a million years reading the King James Bible. He did two things in chapter 1. He created the universe and then for six days, not for in six days, that word in is not in Exodus 20 and verse 11, for in six days. No, for six days period, not for in six days. For six days then he did something else. What did he do? He made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. Are you seeing it? In a sense, in Genesis 1-1, he made all the raw materials of the heavens and the earth. And in the six creation periods, he fashioned it, molded it, built it. Verses 1 and 2 have absolutely nothing to do with what happens in verses 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and so on. Now, scientists will tell you, I mean, I haven't read that many books. I, I, the main books on this theme I've read are Dr. Schroeder's, who is an applied physicist and a PhD, and he's a theologian. So he tries to explain some of these more difficult scientific matters in layman's language. When in the Big Bang, according to scientists, this explosion spread out, but it was a considerable time before there was light because it was so dense. I mean, you pack a hundred billion galaxies with a hundred billion stars into a grapefruit. Mustard seed. Mustard seed. <laughs> it was, in a sense, an exploding black hole. There was no light. Scientists would say there's no light. Light could not escape. And there were no heavy metals. There was no iron or tin or lead, gold or silver. It was a hydrogen atom. So not only you condense the whole universe down to the size of a grapefruit or a mustard seed, you condense the whole universe down to hydrogen. This is mind-boggling. But scientists will tell you, not only was everything that exists in the universe in that exploding central point, not only was it all in there, it was infinitesimally timed to the trillionth of a megasecond. It had to be perfectly timed. The timing had to be flawless beyond imagination or it wouldn't have worked. We wouldn't have what we have today. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. Not that it didn't have any form at all. It was formless and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, I'm not completely sold on the idea yet that this is totally speaking about water covering the earth although it certainly did. I think it has a larger meaning. Remember that old song, A Bridge Over Troubled Waters? In a sense, I think that's what this is talking about. This is the beginning of the creation and its troubled waters. Troubled waters. You get the idea that something's not right here. Some will say, well, the earth it should read, and the earth became without form and void. Well, actually, yes, it did in a sense became, but not at this point. Again, the Hebrew here is blue perfect in English. It would more accurately be translated, and the earth, and is correct, the word and is in there, and the earth. That's one word in Hebrew. And the earth is one word. It's iritz, the word earth, and then a sign for and and a sign for the. The word there is only earth. No, it's and the earth. It's in there. And the earth was. Now, the only way you can translate that was 
if you translate it, and the earth was already, it was already void and vacant and darkness was upon the face of the earth. But a better translation would be, and the earth had existed. Blue perfect English, past tense, had existed. The earth was already this way or had existed in this condition. And notice what God says next. And God said, let there be light. Let there be light. What the scientists tell us happened after the Big Bang, it took a while before there was light. In the beginning, he had created the heavens and the earth. There was no light. Three verses later, he tell us in the third verse, let there be light. And it should read, and there became light. So you see how this idea of a big bang is not that stupid and atheistic and uh, evolutionary nonsense and all of that. Millions of scientists work with the laws of physics and quantum math and all of these things, cosmology, astronomy, and all of their knowledge of all of the laws of physics fit into the model that the heavens and the earth had a beginning from a central point that exploded out in very rapidly. It's the only thing that fits. Nothing else fits. There's no other theory that fits except this thing that they've come up with, the Big Bang. You could call it the big spreading out. And it would sound more scriptural. The fact of the matter is it is scriptural. Christ calls it the spreading out. Scientists call it the Big Bang, which is just another term for it spreading out rapidly and powerfully from a central beginning.